All right, so I'm going to be reacting to the One Piece Chapter 1000. Obviously, the highlights for me would be uh, looking at Luffy and what he did with Kaido, that little inter interaction they had there. Obviously, the Yamoto and Ace, we got more of that meeting. That was super interesting. Probably my third favorite part was uh, when Marco held off King and Queen because that was clean. First, you know, we have to make sure that for Chapter 1000, everyone who needs to be here is here. So, you know, Marco takes Zoro to the top of Onigashima and holds off King and Queen, which is super interesting because obviously One Piece fans love power scaling. So we have people like King and Queen, who King is first commander level and Queen is like second commander. I think like Robin might stop Black Marie or hold off Black Marie so Sanji can get out of there and help fight Queen. Because it seems like the way they're, they're almost like foreshadowing for, for Sanji to have to fight Queen, especially with his new raid suit. And then we move on to Yamoto and Momo. The, they do it in a cool way where... Yamoto and Momo are talking, or Yamoto's really the one talking to Momo. Yamoto's talking to Momo, and as that's happening, we're seeing, like, Law and, like, Kid and Killer, you know, the scenes getting set up. Like, they're getting to the Onigashima. And we get some more exposition from Odin, with Odin talking about, uh, in 20 years, if he's not there to fight, strong pirates will be coming through in 20 years, and they're going to be the ones to take down Kaido. Yamoto had Ace's rear card, so when Ace died in Marineford, as we all know, once that happened, she knew that Luffy was going to be one of the people that would come back. Especially with uh, how Ace talked about Luffy and how Luffy's words obviously were the same as Roger. So that's clean. We have Ace talking about Luffy's dream to Yamoto and how that's just something that even though when they were kids, they laughed about it. Like that's not something to play with. And obviously that's another great ASL moment. Yamoto cries and says that she would never make fun of it because she knows about how Roger said the same words and the, a great figure. This scene honestly cements Yamoto as like a potential straw hat. Like that was obviously confirmed. Like the moment we saw her, she was strong. She had the connections. But like this right here, this is a moment that Straw Hats get. Like Straw Hat members usually get. Obviously, we remember Usopp in the Alabast arc. He said, uh, don't make fun of his dream. Uh, Nami just got this moment a couple of but chapters ago where she tells Ulti that Luffy's going to be the Pirate King, which is not the same, but like it's the same kind of message. I feel like it's Oda's way of saying that she's at least going to be one of the people that's going to join the Straw Hat crew. Because I uh, honestly believe that Momo, Tama, and Yamoto will be joining the Straw Hat crew after the end of Wano. But this obviously pushes Yamoto because I feel like now she's, definitely gonna join the crew next moment was really interesting because uh we get ace hearing about how this great man and how he said the exact same words that luffy did and ace is talking about oh i want to meet him and he seems like a great guy me luffy and him should have a drink together and it it kind of puts things in uh, a certain aspect or perspective because it's interesting because we know how ace feels about his father but we i think we always kind of felt deep down that it's like it's not because of who his father was because he never got to meet like, his dad who obviously we know is roger he only felt this way because of like, what he felt like he had to go through because he was the son of Roger and how Roger was described to him by other people. Like, not Garp, for instance, who described him, but, you know, the random people when he was in that bar, he obviously heard that a lot. Even, like, the Dan, in the scene, you see the Dan's talking about how he's, like, the son of the devil. Obviously, we know One Piece is, like, the anime of uh, perspectives. A sees Roger as this certain man, but we obviously know that's the farthest from the truth. Yamoto just shows Roger's actions without the man or the face or the name and like ace is like this guy's cool we should hang out and and yamoto confirms that luffy and that guy are very alike which we obviously know that by now and then another piece to tie in together like this chapter is just insane yamoto gives ace his viewer card and basically saying that we're gonna meet again and she describes what a viewer card does and gives it to ace telling them that we're gonna meet again and that's obviously the viewer card if you remember in alabasta the ace gives to luffy and telling them you know we're gonna meet again which they do ace is now dead so he's not gonna be the one to take down kaido but he spoke about his little brother. Luffy and Ace are what? Brothers, you know, not by blood or whatever, but Luffy and Ace being brothers and Ace being the son of Roger, I feel like that put into perspective for uh, Yamoto and now Yamoto was waiting for uh, Luffy to come through. With the next panel, we obviously have Luffy, Law, Zoro, Kid, Killer versus Big Mom and Kaido. And Luffy's all dripped out. You know, he got the little, we obviously know he's been hanging with the cloak, but he's dripped out with the cloak. Everyone's just here. So I haven't spoke on it because this is obviously my first video, but I feel like Kaido's gonna die here, but I, I don't think Big Mom's gonna die here. It doesn't make sense for them to beat Kaido or Big Mom, but I don't know. Luffy was just acting different in this chapter. Kaido and Big Mom are talking, and he tells Luffy, what is your dream? To tell Big Mom what she was talking to me about. Basically, it's the, don't act different here. And Luffy's paying them no mind, not worried, not worried about any of that stuff. He comes into Akinamon and asks him if he's all right. He has a different air of energy to him, you know what I mean? Contrast him when he first met up with Kaido versus now. Obviously, we know Luffy he wasn't in the right state of mind. He wasn't thinking straight. But this Luffy, he's like, he's cold or he, he's chill. He know what he need to do. He talks to, to Kinema, make sure he's all right. Law gets him out of there. We have a strong scene from Kinema because he's kind of like the leader of the scabber. So he's obviously the one that's going to tell what everyone's kind of thinking in that sense. And Kinema's talking about how he feels like 
he can't face Odin if he, if they die. Like he can't face him in the afterlife just because of like the showing that they had. Even though like this is Kaido, bro. Like he's the world's strongest, but he asks him to save Wano, and we know Luffy's gonna save Wano. And one thing about One Piece arcs with Luffy is I feel like Luffy really don't turn up until like his friends are in danger. Like Luffy will care about things happening, but it really isn't until like his friends are hurt. Like personally, his friends are personally hurt or affected by the main villain. We know Luffy's really gonna turn up. So obviously, like the Arlong stuff, when he finds out, he doesn't even really know what or what Arlong did to to Nami, but he knows Nami's crying. So like, I'm I'm really gonna turn up on you, and like this is very similar. So we see the scabbards. We don't even have them confirmed alive. We know Kinemon's alive as of now, as of when he's talking, because he's talking obviously. And Luffy's like, I take care of it. Like I'm a, I'm gonna handle business, and Law gets him out of there. We get all the stuff that Kaido's basically done. Luffy's like, I'm Monkey D. Luffy. I'm gonna take y'all down, and I'm the Pirate King, and. The chapter ends with, like, Luffy busting out this technique that, obviously, we don't know about. So, he, he pulls out Gear 3rd and he uses Gamma Gamma no Red Rock. And, like, that joint is crazy. With the One Piece power system, it's a little confusing because of the way it is. And we haven't had it all fleshed out as far as we are into the story. And because of that, this lends me to the theory uh, that I got from Tekken, honestly. Tekken 101, so check out the channel if you haven't already. This is the headcan I'm going with. You know, the fire or the elemental attacks that that non Derrifu users or Derrifu users that don't have that power can use, like Sanji, his Diablo Jambe, and Luffy's Red Hawk, and Thor Hammer. These are attacks that are they're in elements or Derrifu abilities that they don't have. Like Sanji's not a Derrifu user, Luffy's Derrifu is rubber. But for some reason, he can do that. Even like Doflamingo, his overheat, which is like his fire string. And we have, uh, you can look at Katakuri, he has his flaming mochi. Like these are abilities that kind of, kind of don't make sense. Like, why are the why do they have these fire and for Luffy these this lightning attack? I've always felt like it was a form of like conqueror's hockey because we see that Luffy has conqueror's hockey, Luffy has conqueror's hockey, Doflamingo has conqueror's hockey, and even Sanji. You know, you could say Sanji doesn't have conqueror's hockey, but I've always felt like the Straw Hat Pirates are they have to have more than one conqueror's hockey user just because we see how they parallel the Roger Pirates. They had Roger and Rayleigh during their time being conqueror's users, and Shanks was a cabin boy at the time, and he later became a conqueror's hockey user. So the Straw Pirates have to have a, more than one. It can't just be Luffy. A lot of people talk about it's going to be Zoro. Like, a Zoro's going to be a Conqueror's Hawker user. And I agree with that. But I also think that Sanji is a pretty good candidate for being one as well. We obviously know that Sanji is related to royalty. And whether he wants to believe it or not, like, that, that that's important. So Sanji being, like, a, a Conqueror's Hawker user, that's not crazy to me. It could be armament. Like, that's not out of the realm of possibility. But I feel like just for how exclusive the ability seems to be used, like, we've seen only a couple people use it. I think that it being Congress makes a little bit more sense. So, you know, he busts out a, a, a gear third version of this. And I always thought, ever since seeing Red Hawk, like, why doesn't he try to do, like, what he does for Red Hawk? Like, it's probably like, let me pull my arm back. Let me use Red Hawk in gear three or gear four. But I always feel like, oh, maybe it's just not possible because it's the way it works. When you first see Red Hawk, you think, oh, that's tough. But then you think for a second, like, wait, like, how is Red Hawk supposed to work? You say, pull your arm and let it, like, rebound like a rubber band. But that doesn't really make sense because... If the logic is that, you know, your arm moves so fast that it's, like, fire, Luffy has faster attacks than that. Like, all his Snake Man attacks are way faster than that, but none of them light on fire. So it's not just, like, a speed thing. And even Sanji, Sanji at first had to spin really fast to do it. But, like, even in time skip, all he does is, like, tap his, like, his toes. But his feet are on fire. And so I, I didn't understand it. But to me, what it looks like is Gear 3 Red Hawk, which I think it is because it's called Red uh, Red Rock, which that's tough. And if you look at the, the scene... Kaido looked kind of hurt. Like, Kaido, if you look at the scene, he looks like he has blood in his face. If Luffy get hurt Kaido like this, Kaido, he might not make it out this, this arc, bro. Like, I already thought Kaido was going to die, as I said earlier, but it's not going to be this easy to beat Kaido like that. It shouldn't be that easy. But if Luffy can hurt Kaido, it's a wrap. So the question, obviously, people will have is, uh, did this chapter meet your expectations? Because the way Oda was hyping up, like, Chapter 1000, even, like, the writers, they were having up the Chapter 1000, like, it's supposed to be the culmination of everything. It depends on your expectations, honestly, because people co were coming with the expectations of uh, getting more, like, the Rock flashback, which, honestly, we're looking for that, especially with how it was set up. Like, at the end of last chapter, we had uh, about the fish fish fruit. Kaido and Big Mom were talking about how our, about their old days and how Kaido kind of owes her a lifelong debt. I feel like pe people had too high expectations, because this Chapter 1000, this is an amazing chapter. Honestly, this is the top 10 chapter of all time. And it had a bit of everything, right? So, obviously, for Ace fans, it had, it had Ace stuff. We had that one panel when the main supernova, we knew we were going to be in this arc, versus Kaido and Big Mom. This is everything we could have wanted. We got some stuff about Odin, more stuff about Odin, uh, the Momo flashback. I think we got a really great potential Yamoto Straw Hat moment and how she acted with Luffy before she even met him. So, that's another great thing. As for Chapter 1000, I think it was named Straw Hat Luffy, which is appropriate because Luffy came in and he was that man. 
Like, Luffy, just think, you got to put this into perspective, bro. Luffy pulled up to two Yonko and had no care in the world. Luffy wasn't stressed. Zoro wasn't stressed. Law wasn't stressed. They are cooling. They, they're ready to hang with them. And whether we believe they can or not, which is another story, the energy that Luffy's, like, displaying, Luffy acting like he'd been here before. Like, he, he can hang with the Yonko. Like, some tells me, obviously, that this battle ain't going to be like the last battle where Luffy got one shot at. That's not happening this time. As for how they're going to beat them, I don't know, because I didn't even think that, like, the, the main supernovas versus Kaido would have been enough. But Kaido and Big Mom just being here, like, how is that going to work? Obviously, we could see they, they could bust out some new stuff. Like, we haven't seen Zoro bust out Emma to the full capacity. We know Luffy has Ryo. He could have a new Gear 4 technique with how great his mastery is. We see that Luffy's been busting out Gear 4 a lot lately. He's busting out to, to defeat not randoms, but, like, he's been busting it out like how he used to bust out Gear 2 and 3 after the time skip. So that's really interesting. Uh, Law, we, we see, I feel like we've seen all that Law can do, but the way Law's moveset works, he'll always be a factor in fights like this. And Kid, we, we haven't really seen what Kid can do. I think we saw one name technique from Kid so far. And Kid was collecting a lot of metal to fight the Yonko. It's going to be interesting. And I'm not even going to undermine Killer. Like, we saw Killer hurt Zoro a while ago, and that was, that was like crackhead Killer. So we don't, we don't even really know what Killer could do. Like, Killer's a supernova just like Zoro is, like Luffy and Law. Like, Killer ain't no joke either. So this chapter, bro, I mean, like, it's got to be a 10 out of 10. Just, just everything it did... It did what One Piece does, like, just a banger chapter. So, obviously, the, the big uh, saying is whether oh, this uh, raid will end in failure. Shout out Mr. Moj, obviously, check him out, too. I don't know if they're going to have to regroup, but just the way it's being set up, I don't, I don't, I think this is, like, the last fight. This fight will probably last, like, what, 10 or more chapters, probably? But, they're ready to box. Kid, Law, Zoro, Killer, like, Luffy, obviously. It's time. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, let me know what you thought about the chapter, but that's just really all I got to say about that. So, uh, I'm out. Peace.